Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. In this one we will have a look at a dual screen Windows tablet slash phone also known as the Microsoft Surface Duo. The Surface Duo is a foldable released in 2020 by Microsoft and as you can see it usually runs Android. But we're here to change that. First a few remarks about the device. It runs a Snapdragon 855 with 6GB of RAM and has 256 or 120GB of storage. Both more than the last phones I installed Windows on. These two. Video links in the description. But why would you even want to install Windows on here? First of all because Android on here is not really great. I used the phone for a few months on Android now and it has many issues. You're constantly holding the device wrong. You have to flip it, it's not working, now double tap and there are many other issues. The switching of an app from one screen to the other is very wonky and I feel like that there is lag in just too many aspects of this phone. It all feels a bit half-baked. My main phone at the same time has been a Samsung Z Fold and it has none of these issues. Microsoft also dropped support for the Duo this month. So yeah, I don't really care about the Android on here. The second reason for Windows on here is because of the interesting form factor. If you have watched this channel, you would know that I love small computers. Like these two here, GPD Pockets. And this foldable form factor kind of reminds me of a small notebook, if you fold it like this. And generally, a portable device with two screens, how cool is that? I saw something similar back in 2010 from Toshiba called the Libretto W100. Acer also had something similar but a bit bigger. And now I would like to recreate that here with a modern twist using modern windows and this foldable phone. So this is not a tutorial, just a small overview. The Windows on ARM team that made all this possible has a very good guide linked in the description that shows everything step by step. And as usual, the process is very involved and may break your phone, so be careful. So first, you have to unlock the bootloader of your Duo to boot the recovery and UFI we need for later. Then you need to create the partitions. So you basically delete the Android partition and create three new partitions. One for Android, one for Windows EFI partition and one for Windows itself. Next you have to boot the Team Win Recovery Project, or TWRP for short, uh, recovery to get the phone into mass storage mode. So you can write on the partitions that you just created. Then you only have to install Windows using this mass storage mode. And lastly you need a way to boot Windows. So you need to configure a bootloader that allows you to boot Android and Windows because this is a dual boot, as you've seen in the intro. If everything worked, you can now boot Windows. And the funny thing is, you boot Android by booting the phone in its open position, and you boot Windows by booting the phone in its closed position. So there's no boot menu like we have seen on the Pocophone F1. You just have to open or close the phone during boot. So now we can try to boot Windows for the first time. 15 minutes later. That looks good. You can do it. You can do it. Yes. Yes. You idiot. So what I'm trying to accomplish now is to go from USB-C to USB-A to Ethernet and connect it to my wired network. It actually worked. Interesting. So maybe the Wi-Fi drivers aren't working correctly? <laughs> okay. Oh no, it has to reboot. <laughs> no, we have to reboot again. Why? Just a moment. I don't like that. It usually isn't a moment. It's way longer. What? It, it actually was only a moment. Crazy. 
my name, mm, that is of course me, as you all know. And um, yeah, my password is top secret and no one will ever find it out. Security questions, as always. Okay, the name of your oldest cousin, I guess that would be me. Sweet Home Alabama playing in the background. Yeah, first pet name. What can I can I say? And my childhood nick nickname. Um, yeah, it was me. Crazy. No Microsoft, I don't want to give my location to you. I don't want to help you track me. Sell all my soul to you. No, thank you. Okay. Just a moment. <laughs> Hi. Getting things ready for you. I'm really stoked to see how this actually works. I've never used a dual screen device before. As I told you in the intro, I really loved these dual screen notebooks that were a thing for like a few years, but I never actually used one. And of course they were running like Windows 7 or Windows Vista and not uh, Windows 11. So we will see how it turns out. Yes, yes, we are finally in Windows. So I still have to set up the actual dual boot so I don't need to use another notebook all the time. And of course install software so we can really test it. But I want to see how the dual screen actually works. <laughs> um, not great. I can't really move a window. Yeah, I, I, have, to, I have to drag it to the edge and then grab it on the other side again. So I will install the dual boot and some software and then we can continue. But we couldn't continue. Once I rebooted Windows, it was refusing to start again. So I spent hours trying to get it to boot again. What worked for me in the end was that I used an older EFI version from December last year, so 2022, to get into the Windows recovery. And from there, I could actually boot Windows. And that made me think, why is this method working? And I think the answer is that Windows usually does not do a full reboot. It only starts basically from hibernation. Uh, it's a feature called Windows Fast Boot. And since I now was in Windows, uh, I disabled Fast Boot and that actually fixed it. So now I can dual boot Android and Windows using the latest UEFI version. I just had to disable Fast Boot. Yeah. And then I installed my benchmarks and games. So let's have a look at them. So I've augmented the setup a little bit. I plugged in my USB-C dock so I can connect as usual a keyboard and mouse. This is not really needed because we have an excellent on-screen keyboard that we can have on one screen and the Surface Duo actually supports the Surface Pens which work like a mouse. But while filming I think it's easier to just use mouse and keyboard. The next problem is that this build of Windows does not support audio yet. So I've plugged in my headphones because um, the speaker that I used in the last episode with the USB-C audio dongle for some reason did not work here. So I'm using these headphones and I'm just putting these <laughs> on your virtual ears and I think that should also work. And the last problem, maybe the biggest problem, is that we have to be fast because this device is not able to charge under Windows. So that being said, let's get started. As you've probably seen, I've installed some games and the first question you probably have when you see a device that is running Windows, does it run Crisis? And of course, I ask myself the same question. That's why I installed it. So we will find out if it runs Crisis. As you can see, I've used the uh, lower screen as the main display now because it's easier to film because it's flat, but you can obviously swap that and use the other display. I did not really find a way yet to use both displays, 
But uh, yeah, then you would have a seam in the middle. Okay, since uh, I had some problems here, I might uh, set the scaling to 100%. So now it would be really hard um, if I didn't have a mouse and keyboard. But let's try it again. I really love these old publisher and hardware company logos. Okay, I hope you can see it because it's very dark. Um, but at least here, it is very smooth. Okay, I've changed all the settings to low. And as you can see, we are now very close to our 30 FPS, at some points even a bit higher. So yeah, I think I could actually play this. And I mean, we can see, it runs Crisis. Okay, so this game is called Four Story and it's one of my favorite games of all time. It's a World of Warcraft clone from the early 2000s. And what I'm trying to do here, I'm sorry, I, I hope you can see the screen here. I have the game up here and now I have the software keyboard down here and I want to see if I can actually play a game using this software keyboard here um, with the game being played here. <laughs> and I can. Okay. <laughs> There's a bit of a delay um, and you can't press two keys at once. But yeah, I mean, <laughs> I can walk around like this. Maybe if I get rid of the mouse and use the pen, does this work? Oh, it, ooh, that's, ooh, that's not, ooh, no, 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 no. Okay, okay, I'm not using the pen anymore. I'm sorry. Okay, but I mean, you get the idea. Uh, you can actually play a game that is being rendered on one display and have the keyboard in the, on the other. So yeah, you probably already thought what about the Rockstar Games icon here? Is he trying to run GTA 4 again? Which we already did on the Poco phone. But no, 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 no. I'm trying to play GTA 5 on here. Let's see if it works. I mean, the loading screen has 30 FPS. <laughs> As you might remember from my Poco phone video, I also tried GTA 5 on there and we got on the lowest settings, I think it was one or two frames per second according to fraps but it felt like 20 seconds a frame and this cpu here should theoretically be a little bit more powerful first of all let's um, go to the settings and make sure everything is turned down all the way okay it is maybe we can try frame scaling half damn <laughs> We're actually playing GTA 5 on here. I mean, it's running at 12 FPS, but if we could get the resolution lower and maybe install some mods um, to make the game work on low-end PCs, this might actually be playable. I mean, to be fair, we are also in a very remote part of the map right now. Uh, in Los Santos itself, it's probably uh, going to be a lot worse. Can we drive a car? Okay. That did not work out. <laughs> but I mean, look at it. We're playing GTA 5. I can't believe it. So yeah, enough of that. I also installed some benchmarks. So yeah, let's compare all these devices that we've seen in the last few videos on this topic. So I used Cinebench R23. Geekbench 5 because I couldn't get 6 to work on the ARM CPU here and 3D Mark. In Cinebench, the Duo beats everything here in multicore, which is amazing. But the GPD Pocket 2 has a better single core score. A similar picture can be seen in Geekbench, where the Pocket 2 has a better single core score. But the multicore is what really surprised me here is almost twice of what the Pocket 2 has. In 3D Mark Time Spy, we have a similar result. The Surface Duo beats the GPD Pocket not only in CPU, but also in GPU tasks. So yeah, the Surface Duo running Windows has more performance 
than my beloved small form factor UMPCs. All in all, would I recommend you run out and buy a Surface Duo to install Windows on? Absolutely not. Yes, you can use it as a phone and put your SIM card in under Windows and um, do calls or use mobile data. Or you can use Android for all the phone stuff and then reboot into Windows for all the Windows stuff. But while using it, I noticed many things are not working. In Android, they will never get fixed. Let's be honest. Under Windows, they might get fixed at some point. This project is still under active development. But for now, I noticed under Windows that the touch is sometimes a bit unresponsive, the auto brightness seems to be completely broken, and auto rotation is also very flaky as you've seen probably multiple times um, during this video. Or maybe you haven't because I cut it out. <laughs> and besides the benchmark results, I think it just feels a bit less responsive than the Pocophone F1 did. But the groundwork is laid and it can only improve from here. And that's what I love about projects like this. There are actually very dedicated people um, that will improve this. So yeah, thanks for watching. If you want to see more content like this, small form factor PCs and shenanigans uh, using operating systems on devices they were never intended for, please subscribe to my channel and I'll see you next time.